Come on. This is so simple. Is this childlike or what? I'm not like some deep guy. <laughs> I just hope I don't look flaky to you. It's just not deep. Simple. Paul says, I- I'm concerned for you. That the same way Eve was deceived by the serpent, you too have been removed from the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. God talks real plain and the devil says, well, you know, God really, and yeah, but... And that's the language we grew up with. God didn't create us with the ability to talk ourselves out of him. That came through the fall of man. If you say, well, God gave me my intellect. God gave me my ability to reason. (sighs) No, that came in the garden when Satan said what God said and, and he interpreted it in his own way, and Adam and Eve followed that thing. Well, God, really, what God meant was the day you eat the tree, your eyes will be open, and then you'll have the knowledge you're going to eat, and you'll be just like God. God said, look, the day you eat the tree is the day you surely die. Are you going to die? Oh, you're not going to die. God just knows. That's the enemy. God says, the day you eat the tree is the day you surely die, period. Oh, you're not going to and make something so direct and simple to understand complicated and deceived. It's kind of like this. These signs shall follow those that believe. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover, period. Oh, not everybody's going to be healed. I mean, you know, not same voice. The only reason it has power is because it goes along with our experience of not seeing everybody healed. And then our intellect builds doctrine at the cost of truth, which makes us free. We try to make ourselves feel better about what we don't understand at the cost of Him. Because He's perfect theology. He's the will of God revealed, not our experience. And then our intellect gets involved and we start interpreting our experience spiritually. That's a dangerous place because it doesn't equate to the life of Jesus. And all of a sudden we say stuff like, well, you know, it just wasn't God's time. (laughs) Well, who did Jesus ever say that to? You know? Michael, uh, I'd love to heal you, but it's just not your day, buddy. (laughs) It's just not your time. I mean, the Father loves you, and I see you're really hurting, but it's just not your time. You hold on. Your day's coming. Rick, I'd love to heal you, but you know, I've been checking in with the Father, and I only do what I see my Father doing, and it's just not His will to heal you today. Who did Jesus ever say that to? But we say that stuff all the time, and we're to follow Him, not our human reasoning. I bet we've been scammed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Valerie, you're so awesome to me and I love you so much, but I'm really not going to do it today because God is sovereignly working this in your life to build some things in your life that are still weak that He wants to make strong. God is using this affliction, this sickness, to make you a better person, Valerie, honey. So you grin and bear it and endure it because grace is sufficient for you, honey. <laughs> Who did Jesus ever say that to? Why do we embrace it as truth when He's truth? He said, I am truth. He's the visible image of an invisible God. He's the Word made flesh. He's the Tada of God. He comes out like God is. And everything you see about Him is everything about the Father. And then we take our experience, make rational sense of it, and define God through that instead of the life of Jesus. And it sells us short. It planes us out. It steals our hunger. We settle on a theology that keeps us in the same place with the same defeat, same destructions. And then those things keep sealing that belief and proving it again and again when the life of Jesus is contesting it continually. Because he said, follow me and the things I do, you'll do. Is that hype? Is that out of balance? No, it means that we're to teach and train for the work of the ministry till we grow up into him in all things, to the full measure of the stature of Christ. What it proves is we haven't pursued that. We haven't grown there. We've sold that short. We prayed for people that died, and we created doctrine to explain it to protect our heart and soul. And I'm not being mean, because it's still so much about us. 
So we incorporate God into our life and paint this picture of God that's good for us instead of God becoming our life. You don't incorporate God in. It's not Jesus incorporated. You don't incorporate God into your life. You give Him your life, renewed in the spirit of your mind, and you look through the eye of the gospel and manifest the King. Get it? We've been sold cheap on this thing, but we've been bought at a very high price. 